Hello everyone, my name is Hector Alzate. Um, I have a little bit of a weird approach to how, where it comes to art and technology because I come from a totally different background. I have a background in engineering and most of my career I spent in the gaming industry as a technical director or like mechanics programmer. And then I started shifting more towards design and experimental uh, tech and art integrations. And the Center for Digital Media was definitely a big part of that. So today I'm gonna show you a few different projects that I have worked on in the past, uh, both as a creator, uh, just as a technical supervisor or like the dude that actually makes it happen and with collaborations with different types of artists. So the first one is really dear to me because it was a self-initiated project with a bunch of friends, uh, how most experiences often start. We were just really bored at school over a weekend. We had a break and we thought that it would be pretty cool to just go out on a hike, and then we saw a flock of birds flying around, and then we, we became mesmerized with the movements that we saw, and then we thought, hey, wouldn't it be, it be neat if we could create an experience that kinda could capture this and then bring it to a space, and that's how we developed our first installation that we call Boids. So Boids is a flocking simulation uh, that allows you to interact with a giant flock of birds. Uh, we have a, site-specific installation that works with projection and motion capture, where you can direct the group of birds to fly to wherever you point those towards. But we also have an augmented reality app that allows you to create your own bird and then release it to the flock of birds. So, and this was showed at the festival, uh, Carnival of Mixed Realities uh, that we co organized at the Center for Digital Media. So the, here you can see how people started like pointing at the wall and then they could see the birds fly on that cluster, but it was a social experience as well, because more than one person could jump in front of the screen and then the flock would start following them. So you were kind of trying to steal each other's birds, uh, which was interesting social interaction that really brought people into it. So, okay, that's one of those. Then I did a collaboration with Patrick on this project that started as an exploration on cybernetics or what the concept of cybernetics could mean. Um, and then we found a lot of work and an intensive body of work in using this type of concepts in, in art. So what we found is a, it's a, this type of definitions of a mathematical machine that would grab random input and then like interactions from the people. And this has been done since the 80s and then spit it back into them. So an early work is this giant machine, and this is actually the best image that you can find of this thing, because back then, you know, cameras weren't that good, uh, where a piano performer would play a piece that would be interpreted by a machine, and then it would be spit back into it through motion and sound. Um, so then what we developed was the system called Colossus, which is a virtual reality experience where we, using a brainwave data, we lead experiences that react to the way that you're feeling so it's kind of like a co-creation experiment with generative design and generative art, where the, the music that Patrick designed uh, was integrated in such a way that could be controlled and react to your brainwaves, trying to like make, make you relax. But at the same time, if you were to relax, try to bring you into focus. And it was a large experiment into delving into different algorithms to process data or biofeedback for creative intent. So that one was really interesting for me in terms of the, the, technolo the technology that had to be developed in that regard. And that's something that is true for art and technology. And it's that the, the technology is not there already. So we have to develop it and go out there. Um, at the end of this, we ended up developing a plugin that anyone can download and integrate to use in Unity to create uh, experiences that react to brainwave activity. So that was pretty neat. Uh, and the way that it works is that basically you as a person would be wearing the Muse 2, which is a headband that you just like wear here and track your brainwave data. And then that sent the EEG and your heartbeat data that we then sent to a laptop that was running experience that then rendered everything through a VR headset and a pair of headphones and that influenced you as well. So it was kind of like our reinterpretation of that, those early works in cybernetics and how we could merge the human with the machine and make everything one experience inside the same specific cycle. Uh, okay, let's keep this one. And then lastly, this one is 
part of the startup that I'm working on right now. I work with a company called Yumebo. We do a platform for geolocated as well as dynamic streaming of experiences through AR. Um, so this one is a collaboration that we're doing with a Japanese artist called Katsuya Terada. He is on the right of this picture. On the boss is Wilson, our CEO, and on the left is Takashi Murakami. So they are part of the same group of art artists that co-created in their early career. Um, so what we got from Katsuya was a set of 11 virtual reality sculpted statues. Uh, it was only the mesh. So it, like for those of you that are familiar with technology, we got them as an FBX format, so like literally use the geometry. Uh, that means it's kind of like use the structure and then we did all the work of texturing and making it look like these aging bronze statues um, that we could port into a mobile phone. Everything that we do works from iPhone 6s and above. So that means that we support uh, nearly the 80% of the whole market in, in iOS only, and then they, the corresponding for Android. Uh, but the cool thing about this is that it's not only the statues, it's not only the, the thing that you can see in front of you, it's also that we have Similar to what you guys were developing at Toasterla, we also have a map tool where you can put a series of experiences on specific GPS geofence coordinates. Basically what it means is that you have to physically be there to actually access it. And then that collaborating with the artist, we can place this artwork in uh, specific places that are meaningful to the, to the art piece. Um, and not only that, but we can do so simultaneously on more than one spot. So this one, we are probably gonna release it soon, like in the next couple four months or so. I have been saying that for a couple of months, so. Uh, uh, but we're gonna release it here uh, in Vancouver, uh, outside of his gallery in Japan, in Tokyo, and out in a park in LA. So it's gonna be like a simultaneous art journey. Um, and then it revolves ar around what's reality and what's real. So definitely check it out when we actually publish it. Um, and so, but it's not only the statue itself, we also can, create interaction. So we, coming from the gaming industry, for us inter interaction is a meaningful way to communicate intent or a creative way to do a storytelling where you don't only passively watch art artwork, but you are engaged with it by interacting with it, right? So I'm gonna show you a little video of what that looks like. That's very old UI, which I hate, but it works. Um, and that is pretty much it for me. So today I brought for the show and tell afterwards, I brought the first six interactive statues from Katsuya Terada, as well as the flock of birds that we developed, both on augmented reality. Uh, so just like, come hit me up and I'll show it both to you. Uh, thank you. Ha 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 ha!